Welcome to Countouts. In this lesson, we are looking at part two of the accounting for beginners lessons. We have done part one. You'll find it in the link in the description below where we specifically focused on the accounting equation and how it works. And if you have not checked that one out, I would encourage you to check that one out before checking this one out where we are looking at debit and credit. We are going to take the exact same transactions we looked at when we we're doing the accounting equation to do debit and credit or to do the general journal. So in this specific one, we're going to focus on that one day. You'll also find the following lessons in the links in the description below, as well as other lessons that we have done on debits and credit. So here we go into great detail while we're addressing what you need to know when it comes to debits and credits. So the first thing we're going to look at is knowing what to debit and what to credit. What do you debit and what do you credit? Well, we have already looked at what are assets, what is equity, and what is liabilities. And we went through examples of what forms part of assets or what accounts are classified as assets, what accounts are classified as equity, and what accounts are classified as liabilities. Now the question is, which of those accounts do we debit and which of those accounts do we credit? Well, here I'm going to show you an acronym that will simplify your work before we get into the transactions and seeing how we debit and credit. So this acronym will help you remember what you need to debit and what you need to credit. It will greatly simplify your work. We've showed this acronym before in one of our previous lessons, but let's get into it again. The acronym is Dead Click. That is the acronym that you need to remember. If you can remember these two words, Dead Click, then you will be able to know what to debit and what to credit. But what do these letters stand for, each of them? Well, let's begin with D-E-A-D -E or Dead. Well, the first thing that D stands for is Debit. All right, so you're going to be looking at debit and what do we debit? We debit expenses, which is the E, you debit assets and you also debit drawings. So whenever you have expenses, whatever expense that may be, you should know that it goes on the debit side. Whenever you have an asset, whatever that asset is, you should know that it goes on the debit side. And whenever you have drawings, you should also know that it goes on the debit side. What about click? What does click stand for? Well, I'm sure you can tell that the first C actually stands for credit. And what do we credit? We credit liabilities, we credit income, and we also credit capital. Now remember, we looked at all these items in the previous lesson in part one, and we also looked at a few examples of them. So you now know what you need to debit and what you need to credit. Whenever you have expenses, assets, or drawings, you know that you have to debit them. Whenever you have liabilities or an income or capital, you know that you credit them. Now, if you're reversing the transaction or if it's decreasing, then you know you put it in the opposite side. Let's say assets, for instance. We gave examples of assets in part one. One of an example of an asset is inventory. Whenever you're buying inventory or whenever inventory is coming into the business, we're going to debit it. But what about when we are selling inventory? Well, that's decreasing our assets or it's reducing the inventory we have in the business, which is an asset. So going to put it in the opposite side, which is the credit side. So that is what I mean when I say whenever it's decreasing, you put it in the opposite side. Let's say liabilities, for instance, if you owe money to your supplier, obviously you will credit it because it's a liability. But what about when you pay the supplier? Obviously, you will be decreasing your liability. That means you put it in the opposite side, which is the debit side. I hope that has made sense and I hope you can use this acronym to be able to know what to debit and what to credit. Now let's go through the same transactions we looked at in part one in doing our journal entries, our debit and our credit and using this acronym to remember what we need to debit and what we need to credit. Here is the first example. We were told in this example that the owner invested in the business by depositing 20,000 rand cash. And if you looked at part one, this should be very easy. Remember we said that with each transaction, there is at least two accounts and we will have a debit and a credit. Remember with each transaction, you have at least two accounts as we mentioned in part one and you will always have a debit and a credit. Now your total for your debit must always match the total for your credit. This is what is known as the double entry system. So let's identify the two accounts here. If you look at the first one, it should be quite easy. Remember here we are looking at the word cash and if the owner deposited 20,000 rand cash, the first account we have there is bank and we know that bank is an asset. So that is our first account bank. And what is the second account? Where is the money coming from? Well, the owner is investing in the business. And we say that if the owner is investing in the business, the second account we have there is 
capital. So we have the two accounts and we've identified them. It's bank and capital. But what is bank? What element is it? Is it an asset? Is it equity or liabilities? Well, bank is an asset as we looked at it in our previous lesson. So if bank is an asset, we know that it's increasing because money is coming into the business because the owner is investing in the business. So we're going to debit bank. Remember, the acronym debtly, we debit the expenses assets. So we're going to debit bank. And what about capital? Capital is our second account. We obviously credit it. From that acronym CLICK, we credit liabilities, income, and capital. So we also credit capital. So that is what we're going to do. And here is how the journal entry will look like. You debit your bank with 20,000 rand. Remember, debit, you always start with it's on the left and then credit on the right when you're doing your journal entry, as well as when you're doing your ledger accounts. And that is coming in the lesson that is to follow. You'll find it in the link in the description below. So we debit bank 20,000 rand and we credit capital 20,000 rand. So bank is increasing by 20,000 rand. Capital is increasing by 20,000 rand. And what is our narration here? Sometimes they may tell you that you need to include narrations or sometimes they will tell you to ignore narrations. Narration is just explaining what is happening in that particular journal entry. So here we have put the narration, the owner invested money in the business. Now the narration will not look the same from one student to the other. It may look different between different students. One may write the capital contribution by the owner. That is still fine as long as you're explaining what is happening in the transaction. In fact, the narration is the easiest thing for anyone to do. So I hope you can see how we are applying that acronym that we got. There are different acronyms as well, but this one here works pretty well and I've always used it. So it should work well for you as well. So that is how you use the acronym and that is how you apply the double entry system when doing your journal entry. Let's look at our second example. Number two says that bought inventory on credit three thousand rand. Now, can you identify the two accounts that are involved here? You bought inventory on credit for 3,000 rand. Right? Well, the first one is very easy to identify because you can see the word right there. It's inventory. And we say inventory can be written as stock or trading stock or trading inventory or merchandise or even goods. Those are all used interchangeably. But here they used inventory and we know that inventory is an asset as we saw in part one. So inventory is the first account. What is the second account? Did we buy this inventory on cash or on credit? Well, we bought it on credit. That means we still owe our supplier or whoever sold this inventory to us. So the second account is trade payables. And we say that trade payables can also be written as creditors or creditors control or accounts payable. So trade payables is a liability. And remember, liability from the acronym is credited. So we're going to debit inventory because inventory is an asset. It's coming into the business. We debit it and we credit liability, which is trade payables because our liability is increasing, meaning we're owing more money. And in this case, it's our supplier. So here is how it's going to look. You debit inventory, 3,000 rand, and you credit trade payables, 3,000 rand. We debited inventory because it's an asset and it's increasing. We credited trade payables because it's a liability and it's increasing. And the narration here is bought inventory on credit. So you can see how easy it is once we know how to identify which account it is and to know whether it's an asset equity or liability and also knowing what is debited and what is credited makes it quite easy for us to do journal entries. Let's look at the third one. The third one says, Paid telephone account by check 700 Rand. What is happening here? You are paying for a telephone account. And what we saw is that telephone is an expense account. So that is our first account, telephone. What about the second account? What is it? Well, the question is how did we pay for this telephone? Well, we paid for it by check. That is bank. So we have just identified our second account. So the first one is telephone and the second one is bank. Now, the next question is, what are we going to debit and what are we going to credit? Well, since we know the telephone is an expense and expenses increase on the debit side as per the acronym we looked at, 
we are going to debit telephone 700 rand. What about bank? Well, we also know that bank is an asset and assets increase on the debit side. However, what is happening to the bank here? The bank is not increasing. It's actually decreasing because we are paying for the telephone account. So if the asset is decreasing, it decreases in the opposite side, which is the credit side. So we're going to debit telephone because it's an expense and we're going to credit bank because bank is an asset that is decreasing in this particular transaction. So here's how it's going to look. Telephone 700 rand debit and we credit bank 700 rand because bank is decreasing. And remember, assets decrease on the credit side and the narration here is paid for telephone. I hope this was simple enough for you. Let's look at the fourth one. The fourth one says bought inventory by check 1500 rand so let's identify our two accounts well the first one is quite easy as you can see we have inventory here and inventory is an asset and it's increasing because we bought the inventory so we're going to put it on the debit side and what is the second account well we ask ourselves the question again how did we buy this inventory was it on cash or on credit well we bought it on cash because we paid by check that means bank is the second account and again what is happening to the bank account is it increasing or decreasing well we know bank is an asset and in this case it's decreasing just like the previous transaction that means we put it on the credit side so we're going to debit inventory 1500 and credit bank 1500 and the narration here is bought inventory by cash let's look at the fifth one here is the fifth one and what you can do here is to pause after i open the transaction and try and attempt it on your own and then you can continue the video and see if you get it correctly so go ahead and try this one okay i hope you have let's look at it we paid the supplier 3000 rand in settlement of account so here what were we doing we're paying the supplier so by looking at the word paid we know that bank is the first account that we have identified and the second one is what are we paying for well here we're told we're settling an account that means we're settling an account which was a liability whenever they tell you you're settling an account it means you owed someone money and now you're settling it and that means you had a liability and now that you're clearing the liability it's going to reduce the liability so what is happening to the bank first of all bank is an asset and in this case also it's decreasing because we are paying out the money that means we're going to credit bank what is happening to the liability since we are settling an account meaning we are clearing a specific liability our liability is also decreasing so remember from the acronym liability is credited but if liability is decreasing we put it on the opposite side which is the debit side so we're going to debit the liability 3000 rand what is the name of this liability it's trade payables because remember if you are paying a supplier it is trade payables like i said you can use the other words creditors control or creditors or accounts payable so we debit trade payables because it's a liability which is decreasing and we credit bank and here it's how it's going to look and the narration there is settled an account with the supplier i hope you attempted it and i hope you also got it correctly let's look at the next one the sixth one says bought stationary by check 150 rand so you can go ahead and attempt this one as well and then you can continue with the video i hope you have attempted it so let's go into it here we bought stationary by check 150 rand well i hope it's getting very easy for you to identify bank here because we paid by check meaning we paid cash we have bank that is our first account what is the second account well it's also very easy because we're buying stationary so the second account is stationary but what is stationary classified as well it goes under equity because stationary is an expense account as we explained in part one as well just like telephone stationary is an expense account so we're going to debit stationary because it's an expense and it's increasing our expenses and we're going to credit bank because we are paying for this stationary meaning our bank is reducing and it's an asset so we'll put it on the credit side so here we go we debit stationary 150 rand and we credit bank 150 rand and the narration here is bought stationary by check 
Let's move on to the next one. Number seven says the owner drew a business check of 2,000 rand for his personal use. What is the first account here? Well, we can see business check here. So that means we have bank. And what happened to the business check? Well, it was drawn. And for what purpose was it drawn? Well, we're told the owner drew a business check for his personal use. What is that called? That is called drawings as we saw from part one as well. So we have the two accounts, bank and its drawings. And remember, bank is decreasing in this one because the owner took the money from the business account. So we put it on the credit side. And drawings is an equity account and it reduces equity. And obviously, we put it on the debit side. So we're going to debit drawings 2,000 Rand and credit bank 2,000 Rand. And the narration here is owner drew a business check for own use. Let's move to the next one. Number eight tells us that the tenant paid the monthly rent to the company 2500 rand well we can see here that some money was paid and it was paid by the tenant that means the tenant was paying the company so the bank account is increasing so that's our first account bank and what is our second account well what was he paying for he was paying for rent that is rent income if we were the one who were paying rent that would be rent expense but since we are being paid the rent that is rent income. So we debit bank because the money is coming into our account and assets increase on the debit side of which bank is. And we credit an income account, which is the rent income. So here's how it's going to look. We debit bank 2,500 rand and we credit rent income 2,500 rand. And the narration here is received rent from a tenant. Let's look at one more. The owner contributed a vehicle worth 30,000 rand to the business. Again, you can attempt this one here and continue the lesson after you have attempted it. So what are the two accounts involved here? Well, we have a vehicle account because the vehicle is being contributed by the owner. That means a vehicle is coming into the business and a vehicle is an asset account. So our asset is increasing. So we're going to debit vehicle. And what is the other account here? How did we get the vehicle? Well, the owner is contributing the vehicle. So whenever the owner contributes to the business, whether it's contributing money or is contributing an asset, as is the case here, it's called capital and capital is recorded on the credit side, as we saw from the acronym. So we have vehicle, which is debited 30,000 Rand and we credit capital 30,000 Rand. And the narration here is capital contribution by the owner i hope it has made sense and you got correctly what you attempted to do and if you didn't you're able to pick up where you may have got it incorrectly and this is how you use the acronym to do your debits and credits and this is how you do journal entries i hope it has made sense and i hope you gained value from this particular lesson and you are getting a grasp of how the double entry system works let's get into part three where we are looking at the general ledger you'll find the link in the description below. See you in the next one.